Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Lens World. My name is Shazad and today I am talking about dark photography. Uh, just to give a small glimpse of what my channel is, this is not a tutorial but rather it's kind of a vlog where I will be making videos of, um, of doing photo shoots myself. Uh, I do a lot of photo shoots for a lot of my clients for menus, websites. And today I'm actually at home. I'm doing a photography for a homemade product, a kulfi, which is basically a kind of ice cream. And the equipment that I will be using is, um, first off, with my camera, I'm using a Canon 60 Mark II with a 24 to 105 mm lens. Uh, this is a great camera. I also have a 60D. That was my beginner's camera. Uh, if you don't have a lot to invest, I think that was a great camera for me in the beginning, and I would suggest it for you guys as well. Uh, other than this, um, I'm using this speed light. I would really recommend a flashlight for all photographers uh, because uh, even in dark situations and even if you're uh, somewhere indoors and it's daylight and you get all that natural light, I think this can create a lot of difference. You can play with it. You can bring the lights in from different directions to give you another type of look, to give you another type of shadows. And I'm using this one. This one I got from Amazon. It was for about $45. Uh, it's a great uh, flash. One of the real reasons uh, why I got this one, I had another one before this, but, but it was because of this uh, wireless transmitter. Uh, like when I'm using this with a softbox, I also got a newer softbox. Uh, I put this on top of the camera and put this on the side to give it a more uh, natural look where I can use that light to play with it. When you put on the camera, you normally want to bounce it. You can bounce it from the top, from the sides, wherever you can bounce it. That gives it another look. You have to play around with the flash to know uh, how your images are going to come around with different pictures. And what I'm doing today is uh, dark photography. Now, uh, in dark photography, uh, you need light from a specific side and you want to block off all the other angles. Uh, what I got, I got a triform board from Staples. I think it was like for four or five dollars. I got a black one. And I'm gonna be using that to lock off all the lights while I'm gonna be using the light from this uh, onto the subject. So let's get started. So what I wanna show is all the effort that goes in the back end of photography and uh, how simple it can be to do a good photo shoot uh, from, you don't need a big studio or a big place to, all do, to do all this stuff. And uh, right now I'm just in my living room, I'm just using my table, my. Uh, my living room table for the photo shoot and uh, now we're starting so this is the transmitter so uh, this one you can see is the newer box uh, once you open it it's, it's the soft box it's really good uh, for wireless flashlights you can even use this uh, one for I think this one was like 25 bucks. So your lighting kit it can cost you around $90. You, can't, you don't have to make it that expensive. Uh, this one is good for photography, for uh, video sessions as well. You can use um, an LED light. I think I would suggest that if you're doing a lot of events. So uh, you won't have to keep it plugged into a place and get some rechargeable batteries. And you can use it for flashlights as well. I'm not using this according to the f-stop. That's uh, something you would do when you want to uh, use the fl the flashlight will trigger it on its own according to the f-stop. Uh, I don't want to do that because uh, that's when you use it on automatic. That's kind of an automatic feature. This one is a total manual feature. And uh, normally I use that like a one fourth. Um, but uh, in darker situations, you can do it uh, a little like a, like one second one one uh, one one is really bright and uh, especially when you have it on top of the camera I would not suggest one one or one two because uh, it does uh, it, it's really heavy on the eyes uh, especially since I wear glasses I don't use um, the top part I you I directly look at the screen and the light really bounces in my eyes and makes me blind after a few shots so uh, I wouldn't suggest one one or one two, but right now I'm using a softbox, so I'm gonna be using one two. So 
So I got these backdrops from Ilk and M. Uh, they make really good backdrops. Uh, you can use also go to Staples, uh, try different back backdrops. But uh, the the reason why I like this one is because this is kind of like a vinyl. Uh, it's easier to fold. It doesn't get ruined that often. And I have these. I actually got three from them. One was before. Uh, that one got ruined. I'm not really careful in taking care of them. So that one got ruined. I just ordered these two about a week. I got them a week ago. This one's a little uh, woodish, uh, which is really nice for uh, like different type of shoots. But the one that I'm actually going to be using right now is this uh, grayish one. Uh, it's not that dark, but once I'm going to do a, a dark photography on it, it's going to give this. Uh, it, it has this marbleish effect on it and using it for different type of stuff it can come in really handy for example i did a shoot on this of dry fruits and i brought this really bluish smoky flavor in the picture it was because of this backdrop now today what i'm going to be using this is a black marble and once i set up uh, my lights and everything uh, this is going to become dark so, so this is the setup at the moment uh, you see over here uh, i put this tri Trifon board, a black color uh, with that background. And over here, so I cut this up in three ways. I first cut it in half, so I can use these as two portions. Then I cut this one as well. So uh, all of this is blocked. I have this uh, deflector, so I'm using the black part of it uh, to block some more light. And uh, the only opening is this much part so that I can uh, get the light from the softbox directly onto the subject. Now, because I'm dealing with ice cream, I want to first get the ISO and everything towards the right shape so I don't waste a lot of time before it starts melting. So I'm using this uh, pomegranate and uh, right now I have a black backlight on so to get some focus but this is how it's going to look. Now we're focusing on the pomegranate and to get the settings. Uh, let's start off I have the f-stop at 4.0 and uh, in portrait mode, you want to keep it at the lowest setting as possible. It's going to give a more blurrier background. And you can, uh, the lower it is, uh, meaning uh, you get more light in. So uh, you can use that darkest setting. So 4.0 is a really good option. Uh, the other one I have is a 50mm, which can go to 1.8. One, uh, 1 and that is really good for dark situations. Uh, but I'm going to keep this one at the moment. Uh, 160, as I mentioned, whenever you're using a flashlight, you want to keep it at 160 and uh, you want to keep the ISO as lowest as possible so we're going to start off with at least uh, let's go to 5000 you see the image is really dark so because this is a dark photography I have it in manual focus instead of autofocus so now we're going to try out with the first picture at 5000 to know where we're at and let's click so you see uh, it did not uh, even it's that dark but when we put in um, that much light from the side it's really bright and that means we're really overexposed so let's um, let's take it even down so we're gonna bring it all the way to 200 and now that's the image we want we have the perfect amount of light uh, we have some brightness over here uh, I'm gonna take another one at 100 just to get know because uh, the ice cream we're doing is uh, is uh, it's white so it's gonna have its own color so let's, we want to have the lowest setting as possible now we're at 100 we can't go less than 100 so if anything comes after that we're gonna increase that stop and do it from there okay and see that's what we want uh, that's a small image of a pomegranate you see the bottom that's the um, that bottom it was a light color but when the light comes onto it it has this very smoky effect and it's like a small marble and you see the back it's really gone so uh, that's a really nice image what we want and uh, so now we have the settings done but let's just uh, play around and see if we even reduce the light even more what happens so so that's our new one and you see it over here 
you have this really nice look. Uh, now you want to compare which one is better. Um, I actually like uh, the one with uh, f.6 stop, uh, especially when we're going to reduce the uh, uh, highlights and everything, it's going to come out really good. So I'm going to keep the setting at the moment. And uh, we're going to bring in the kulfi right now. Now I have the kulfi inside. I put two kulfis with some, uh, this is like pistachio uh, on top. It's like a grounded pistachio. And uh, now we're going to go with the photography. Settings ready. Uh, that's the settings. And I have the focus and everything ready. I did a little stuff in the background and now I'm going to be taking the picture. And as you can see, the flash went off. And so that's the picture. Uh, I'm going to bring it in the big screen right now. So that's the picture if you zoom it in. Uh, that's how it's coming out. And you can see it's really nice with a real, with a marbly effect on it and really uh, it has a black background. So we're going to now bring this into Lightroom to give it more adjustments. So now I have this imported into Lightroom and uh, Lightroom is really amazing uh, to edit your photos uh, just to bring out colors. So now we're going to, we brought this and I'm going to be editing this photo I've clicked on uh, develop and the first thing so it's basically playing around you can't say anything so i'm gonna be trying uh, different presets in the beginning okay let's zoom in a little um i'm gonna start out with the temperature a little because i want to bring out the yellowish i'm going to turn it a little I'm going to turn up the temperature you can do this in the camera as well and later on so now uh the exposure i think is fine uh over here uh i turned on the blackness of uh, the parts where are where the details going so first i'm gonna i'm gonna because i'm gonna put this on instagram so i'm gonna uh like i'm gonna try to reduce the picture where I don't get any black blackness on the bottom. <clears throat> I get a lot of blackness on the top. Uh, this bluish you see over here, uh, this is basically, uh, this is showing me which details are lost. And if I put the whiteness, uh, I would see some red spots if it's a little overexposed, uh, but I don't see that. So this is perfectly exposed. So I don't need to expose it more, especially in the dark. So I think that's perfectly exposed. Uh, but we're gonna check that at the end when we're gonna bring in some highlights and shadows so i'm gonna turn on the contrast uh this is basically you see it where uh where you you basically play around with it that's how you're gonna get photos so i'm gonna bring it around 20. Uh, the highlights i'm gonna let's see so see i don't want if i'm putting it dark i'm missing my subject if i'm bringing it a lot it's putting a lot of whiteness on there so I'm going to just put it a little positive, I'm not going to do a lot, I'm just like a 4. And shadows, so if I'm bringing a lot, you see the whole picture, and I don't want that. So I want this, I want some shadows to be removed from this area. So I'm gonna, that's why I'm putting in the shadows, if you see over here, if I'm reducing it, this part is getting a little more darker, and I don't want that, so I'm going to be increasing the shadows to the point where you can't see any of the background and also so increasing some of the black part to the point where you can't see the background and you get this part removed now if you always want to check uh, how the picture was from before and after so you see over here if you click on the Y and Y this is before and after so you see how before and after how the picture comes out now I see that this I feel is a little more, the highlight, it's highlighting a lot, so I'm going to uh, try to reduce before, yeah I had a plus 3 so I'm going to bring it to 6. And then uh, I'm going to turn out the, bring out the clarity. Uh, it gives it a little more sharp look uh, than before. I'm going to turn this off at the moment. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna do a little more dehazing. So you see this is giving that darkness look that you want in a dark picture where it's focusing on the subject. 
vibrance in this type of thing doesn't have really have effect over here in this type of photo you see because when i'm turning it on I, i'm getting that bluish on the bottom and i want that i'll do it a little so i get a little more smoky effect and the saturation is not really useful at the moment but i'll turn it out a little like plus five i guess plus four to keep that greenish part of the pistachio uh, you can do a lot of stuff over here too in curves uh, but i don't need that uh, the pistachio i can turn up the color um, if i want to i'll just turn it up a little just the saturation in the hue but when you're doing this stuff you want to make sure that you're not doing so much that it takes out the focus away from the main part of the picture so even the bluish i think it's coming out a lot so i want to turn that down towards the blackish i'm going to do this so that turns the focus away from here to the real picture and now the yellowish part that's going to brighten it up i want the look for the kulfi right now it's a little bluish so i'm going to want to bring it a little more whitish and you see over there that's your kulfi part and let's do a little more or is brown uh, orange yeah. so i want to i normally keep my hand on uh, uh, command z so i can undo the things when i'm playing around like, because you don't remember the settings you had before and this comes in really handy now uh, that's going to yellowish so i see it's uh, yellow it's not coming in really good so i'll just leave that alone and uh, that's for the colors so i'm going to come in a little more sharpening i'm going to whenever you want to sharpen you want to come on one to one bring it really close and uh, you can see how much is sharpening another option uh, another way to do it is you can press option and then do it so it's going to bring it to grayscale to show you what it, how much exactly is the sharpening and the radius you see that so and the detail i don't want too much detail and a little mask so you see that uh, since i don't have a lot of noise the iso was at 100 so i don't need noise reduction but if you ever do noise you see it makes the picture a little weird and so i don't need any noise reduction i like the short picture and at the end you can bring in some of uh, this uh, it's basically how much you want it so i don't want a lot of it uh, i have some presets set as before as heavy medium non light medium and heavy uh, i think i like heavy at the moment it brings in uh it brings in that look towards the main subject and reducing the bluishness at the bottom so i'll keep that and that's my final picture so let's see over here we had uh this was the original picture this was the original picture and this is after setting it up you see i reduced some part of this i brought more attention towards this it's more sharpened so this is the final image so that's it for today uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed it don't forget to like share and subscribe